you also get a fifteen. Oh, is that the guy that, that does the um the infomercials? Yeah, I know Ron. I know Ron. I'm on a first name basis with Ron. Uh, so me. Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Today on Made the Zuby with you, we're going to talk about the Flesh and Blood 2.0 news, as well as sorcery and the Meta Zoo stuff that has been happening this past week. I hope that you enjoy the episode. Remember to be kind to the people around you. Leave a comment in the comment section if you agree or disagree with all the things we're talking about. Hope to have a great dialogue with you. Hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Let's get to the episode. Whoa, no, this is terrible. This is awful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Welcome to May the Zoo be with you, America's favorite TCG podcast. This is our third take, but we're still on the first print run of May the Zoo be with you. We're you still on 1.0. The joke was 1.0. You don't mess. You don't, is that, is that Prime? Are you drinking Prime? No, it's not. That would be really funny. It's just Monster Hydra. Hey, wait, why do you have bottles of Monster there? This is, is delicious. Yeah, it's like delicious. It's like a water instead of like a caffeinated thing. It's great. Wait, there is no universe that does not have caffeine. None. Oh, sorry. Uh, I meant bubbled, like carbonated. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, so it's a flat Monster drink? Yeah, it's like a Gatorade, but Monster. It's God, great. your kidney stones are going to be the size of West Virginia. <laughs> All right, everyone, welcome to May the Zoo be with you, a TCG podcast uh, where we are sponsored by Prime by Logan Paul. And uh, <laughs> uh, we are going to talk about Fab 2.0. Uh, my name is Louie from Kitchen Table TCG. This I think is you George this. from Com- No, that was in one in take one and two. <laughs> this is George from Compete Sport, America's number two LGS behind only uh, Bill. Bill at Reaper. Um, here we go. We're going to talk about Rudy's Free Tacos and the Modern Print Run. We're going to talk about... What a Fab stupid 2- title. <laughs> it was your idea. It's a Fab 2.0, the combo pack. We're going to talk about Fab 2.0, White Borders. We're going to talk about Fab 2.0, Living Legend. We're going to talk about Sorcery and other Kickstarter games. And then we are going to talk about MetaZoo at the end. So, let's hop in. That's a heart. Uh, okay. This this first part, we love Rudy's free talk. Is just a, a recap of last episode. No, it's not. Louis, bad for you. <laughs> this is a clarification. Okay. Rudy, Doctor Rudy, Esquire. Is this because you called him an asshole? Yes, <laughs> Doctor Rudy Esquire. I'll add some more titles later if it makes him feel better. Is not the reason your monarch. Uh skyrocketed and went to zero some people took it at that and that is not accurate that's her i appreciate that he's going to make things right with his patrons that were overcharged candidly i still don't love the price i told him that privately and publicly that's fine nothing but love for rudy but there is one company in particular that is to blame for this now there's others who, who lobbied on who piled on and made the bright boxes too expensive but there's one company in particular that was to blame and it was his birthday a couple days ago happy birthday um <laughs> I think that is the person who should be refunding some money to customers. And I think a certain card game company should be publicly asking them to do so. Mm, I like it. Never going to happen, but never going to happen. But just like me on diets, one can hope I'm on a diet too. I just had a candy bar (laughs) and a monster. energy. How many calories are in that monster energy drink? I don't know. 110. Not bad. How many servings are in that drink? One, one bottle. I did not. Okay. I thought it was gonna be like 18, yeah, ser- eight, 18 servings. But I had a candy bar that had you know, probably 500 calories. So, um, all right. So, uh, yeah. And I, uh, I mean, like Rudy leaving a comment saying he was gonna, he's, there's yeah. gonna be a video. I'm, I'm, we still haven't seen that video. This is Wednesday that we're shooting this. So, uh, we still haven't okay, seen Okay. It's coming Rudy. out on Thursday. This comes out Thursday. Are we putting this out Thursday? Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe. <laughs> We'll see what day this goes out. Uh, we'll know if Louis did his homework or not. You can tell us in the comment section. <laughs> <laughs> what day are you listening to? Uh, but yeah, no, like I thought, I think like Rudy doing something is, I don't think that was, I don't know if it was necessary. It definitely it necessary. shows, definitely shows Rudy like um, cares about his customers. Yeah. That, um, I'm not shocked by that at all. Like, no, I, no. I think, I mean, like, I don't know. Rudy gets a very mixed uh, rap, and I don't—I never know exactly how fair that is. To be candid, 
Um, my, you can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. Have the other thing plugged in. Um, I, I he, he does well by his patrons. He charges market for hot products, and I wish he wouldn't do that. I'll say that publicly, but like, I get it. I also get it. Like, I remember, like, you know, it's funny. Like, I remember I gained a whole new appreciation for him during Monarch because I charged way below market for Monarch. And all I got every day was 85,000 fracking emails yes. asking me, hey, have you put up your boxes yet? Where do you put up more boxes? Do you have any more boxes? Hey, my yeah. niece's aunt's grandmother's cat died. Can I please have a box? It's the only thing that will make me feel better. And I'm yeah. like, oh, my God, you guys have to stop emailing me. Yeah, I remember our conversation about that. It was like as soon as you get it was, you gave away boxes to your skirmish or i mean skirmish whoever played in your skirmish got boxes super cheap yeah like people were super appreciated and then i remember having a conversation of like but it just you give an inch you people try to take a mile well like they were like i gave everybody a box of market 125 when the market price at that point was like 400 and yeah. i can't count the number of emails i got saying hey thank you so much for the monarch box can i have a case instead can i get a case in yeah yeah I'll even, Mother even like I'll pay one fifty for a case per box for a case instead, and it's like, come on, dude. Like you guys don't. Anyway, yeah, we gotta keep going. Uh, so yeah. I get why I get why Rudy does what he does. We love Rudy. We think that the other online card shop that's live should fall in Rudy's footsteps. Should no bull. They could do more than Rudy. I don't know what Rudy's doing, but whatever he's doing, they could do five x because they're the ones that got 5x the boxes and jacked up the price and played these games. And if yeah. they don't make it right, I think LSS should call on them to do so. Yep. All right. I agree. Fab 2.0 is not that, though. No. All right. Fab 2.0, the combo pack. So we're going to split this up. There's a lot of stuff in the article. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about. We're going to start off and talk about retiring first edition. For part one, retiring first edition. Uh, congratulations to us. They basically took an idea that we had. Yeah. You're welcome, James White. <laughs> Send him a bill. Is that, um, let me ask you a question, James. Is that why we're your favorite podcast? <laughs> You can write in the comment section below. Uh, so, like, I think this is, um, yeah, I mean, like, I, it's kind of fun to, like, look back on. I, I wish we had, like, a list of things that we suggested in the podcast that actually came true. We were, like, I also well, wish we were on, like, somebody better's channel who kept better track of things. <laughs> but somebody would have to do that. I'm out of work and I don't have time. So we'll see. Somebody would have to be a good YouTuber. Thing. Yeah. Um, you know, we've been talking about First Edition Unlimited. There's a problem. Uh, yep. And there has been a problem. Yeah. We we toyed around with a lot of ideas. Yeah. Um, I think what one we actually ended up coming to was not the one that they went with, which no. is but the for me the issue here, the good thing here is that they there was a problem and that they are working on a solution and that they they identified a problem and that they have presented a solution. Yeah. And so basically, if you live under a rock, they're getting rid of first edition unlimited. There's just gonna be one printing or, or sorry, there's just gonna be one product. Um, and that's a very important distinction. There's just going to be one product, and it's going to have cold foils and um, rainbow foils. The cold foils for legendaries are one in every 220 packs. I wrote the same thing. The cold foil for us. rainbow foil legendaries no. is one in every 80 packs. Um, so, so basically, basically, you should still get one legendary per case. But, hold on, boo-boo. But the cold foil legendary is kind of a lot harder to pull. Um, yeah, but the overall legendary pull rate actually got easier. Right. Which is I mean, nice. It got Not a little bit much. easier. It got a little bit I mean, easier, uh, which is nice. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll talk about this in the last part, but yes, yeah. I agree. So far, so far, you and I, simpatico. Yeah. No, like, this is good. This is, I think this is, um, this I, is I good. Will say, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I'm sorry. No, no I apologize. Ahead. I apologize. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> so I will say, like, in classic, like, they phrased it very weirdly to me. <laughs> yeah. Cause like, and I, I told somebody this yesterday. I'm like, if they had said they were getting rid of unlimited, people would have been fine with this, but they phrased this. We're getting rid of first. And there's no real difference between getting rid of unlimited and getting rid of first. Cause there's still just one printing. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do think like, you know, so for my fellow collectors, which we're going to talk about in a minute, don't view this as getting rid of first edition view. This as getting rid of unlimited. Cause it's the same, same thing. Basically. Well, they, they basically say there's no differentiation between first and unlimited. They're simply uprising, which is a new there's set. No, well, Yay, uprising. We should have celebrated that. <laughs> I, 
no, I'm not celebrating names. I'm not celebrating names. <laughs> okay. Not going to happen. So, um, here, here's, uh, here's what I like about this. Okay. I, I like that, um, players get the product at the same time. We've talked about this, that, uh, like that was an issue with Monarch for sure. It was a little bit of an issue with Tails, much less of an issue here with Everfest. Um, but like the idea that like players don't have to worry about waiting if they want the cheapest version, they don't have to worry about waiting. They get their, cards now i think that's a huge win um i think that's good for the collectors um i honestly don't like this for new sets for collectors i think that it makes it a little bit awkward to be like hey i'm gonna open boxes to pull cold foils because the rest of your boxes are oh, not gonna have much value don't do that yeah buy, like, buy them on the secondary um yeah. and and don't buy them the first week on secondary i mean like so Here's been the way I've heard it from people. I've now talked to about 12 stores. I've now talked to probably about 30 collectors and probably 20 players. Players overall pretty happy. Yeah. As I expected. Mm -hmm. Yep. Except with one product we'll talk about in a minute. Um, co old collectors, OGs like me, who have a lot of old cold foils from the first couple sets, they're happy. Yep. Cards certainly picked up yesterday in price a lot for the first three sets and cold foil in particular. Um, the newer collectors are pretty bummed. And I think this is a misunderstanding. Um, whales like sealed product. You're not going to help. Misunderstanding, the misunderstanding from on uh, LSS's part. No, no, no. I think on like, on, I don't, I have no idea if they misunderstand it too, but like on like the comment section, I noticed this yesterday. If you're like, oh, collectors will love this. Now there's like less cold foil legendaries. I'm like, well, a lot of collectors like sealed. Also, you can't convince me there's less cold foil. This is what I, this is going to be my, you continue yours and then we'll talk stores are very mixed yeah um and it's funny and like and this is and this is where i let me be very clear here like i think the change of going to one box is fine i support i, I was my beautiful idea um you're welcome lss um don't no no you you pipe down it's certainly our idea no if I carry the podcast, Certainly, I carry also, the ideas. Also, it's like we're really the only one making content that's helping create solutions to problems rather than just saying everything's okay. And we came up with like 15 different solutions. So like we kind of threw everything in the ring. So it's not really like, we, come so on, the don't you take really credit for like a very easy solution. <laughs> Continue. I know you want to stroke your ego, but I can't let you have it all the time. Continue. So the stores are telling me that this is. Let me walk this back. Half the stores are very excited about this. Um, they're like, this might cut down on some distribution games. This might cut down yeah. on some card shop, not something live games, maybe. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Not gonna I agree anything. with you, but we're going to talk about that in a minute. Uh, so maybe we'll get more into easier allocations. Uh, the other half are like, listen, the whole point of first edition was to basically put pressure on customers to buy fast. You wanted yeah. the first print run to come out. It has all the good cards, all the expensive cards. Uh, you want them to buy immediately. Yep. That's gone now. And they're like, mm -hmm. this might not help because of the timing. Because card prices, and you do the market updates, uh, they weren't booming, I would right. say. Uh, they were going the opposite opposite of booming. Mm -hmm. So they're like, now where there's even less pressure on customers to buy and the market's kind of in a funk, is this gonna get is this gonna hurt overall sales? I don't know. I I don't know. Like I I tend to I tend to think that going to one box is okay. I like it. Um I I get where that store is I get where those stores are coming from. I'd say probably five sent that to me, maybe six. I, I get where they're coming from. I, I tend to think that that's a problem that they can solve. Um, like we'll have release events. We'll have, we'll have a whole bunch of hoopla around uprising. Um, I might do a cosplay thing. This uh, like, you know, that was the, a joke. I'm not doing the, cosplay. This, <laughs> this, uh, basically the pull rates for the legendary cold foils are now equal to a pull rate for a supplemental set legendary cold foil. The difference is the difference is that the supplementary sets only had two legendaries or three legendaries yeah. 
and these will have your regular five or six legendaries. So it makes it very difficult for people who want to have an opening experience to, you know, mass box to you know like we a lot of us did for monarch and for tails so which is fine like again this is this is fine it's going to change the way people um consume the product of flesh and blood um i don't think you're gonna see you will still see the three or four people who want to do it and who have the capital to buy uh you need like a hundred boxes now basically hundred i think you're gonna need a hundred and i think you're gonna need 120 boxes to kind of have a shot at hitting the cold foil fable but you're not going to see most people you're not going to see a lot of people do that I, um, and that's going to lower the amount of boxes that stores will be able to sell on release and then now here's the other thing everyone's telling me this is great for new collectors because uh, it makes the cold foils more rare that is only true if they don't print more boxes and I would venture to say if we now know Monarch's print was 125,000 boxes, I'm guessing Tales of Aria was 150 and they got a 20% increase, uh, like 150 to 160,000 boxes, puts Everfest at 200,000, and that has an unlimited. I would guess that the print run of this new set is going to be around 350 to 500,000 boxes. If you want Everfest Unlimited, DM me. I heard it might be allocated, but I can probably hook you up. Like I got your back. When when you increase the print run that much, I think um, you're, you're going to see the fable coal foils. They're going to be abundantly in supply. I think. Um, I think that's true. I don't know. Like what I think you can convince me of this might increase some value to cold foil leg uh, cold foil legendaries. Um, I, I won't be stunned by that. I also like I, I don't know. Like it's it's a different product. Like I think that's what people aren't. I think we're trying to jam yeah. our old understanding of boxes into these boxes. And it, I don't know if that makes any sense. Yeah. I think it's just a new product. Yeah. But again, um, I wanna I wanna highlight it's good that they have produced a solution to the problem. I liked our solution a lot of doing this, but you get an opening day box topper, like a buy a box yeah. promo. And they might do that. They haven't announced there's no buy a box promos yet. Like they might, they might take another one of my brilliant ideas, and they should. Yeah, my ideas I like are that always idea brilliant. Too. And you um, always claim them as yours. Well, they're always mine. I can't. That's, I mean, like, yeah, not, not true, but it's fine. Um, <laughs> you know, so like, if they add buy a box promos, I think I'll feel a lot better about this because then there's that pressure to buy. Then yeah. it's like I gotta buy it the first month of release because that's when I get my buy a box promos. Um, you know, I think that's good. Um, I'm, we're going to talk about some of the issues we see with this at the end. Is that right in section three, or do you want to go over that now? With the whole article, or with the, the right now we're talking about the combat pack. So if you that's, that's so, I uh, you, you, you want to talk about the draft because I like the draft part. We can about the draft part. That's fine. I like the draft part. If you pull you it during what the draft, draft part is beautiful. Yeah, when you're drafting and you pull a cold foil in a draft, you cannot utilize that card anymore in your draft pool. You just get to keep the card. It's in the token slot. Hopefully they don't leave the token slot at the back of the pack um, because that resulted in a lot of damaged cold foils from uh, Crucible first edition. Uh, but the the cold foil is um, no longer part of your draft pool, which I particularly like because it, it, it and the reason they did it is to protect the integrity of drafting where you don't just draft the most expensive card. There's a famous Magic the Gathering. I know. Uh, I know. Okay. He pulls a foil oh. Tom Tarmogoyf and he takes it even though he's not playing and he lost the he lost the the worlds because of that. And then he then people roasted on the internet. Then he was like, yeah. This is more than I make in a year. Go pound yeah. sand, idiots. Yeah. But like, like that's the point. And I think that's that's a respectable reason I, to do it. So so it's very funny. I really liked that. That was my favorite thing they did to be candid. Mm. Um, my players were very mixed on it in a way that they caught me off guard. I liked that one. I liked that. That was my favorite change they made, honestly. But my players were pretty mixed, and I got to rethink it because I tend to think people who draft four times a week might know more about draft than somebody who does it once a quarter. <laughs> yes, just my fair. just my gut. I don't know. <laughs> That's fair. Um, their concern, and like I get this. Like I'll tell you, I'll tell you what they told me, and I, I can see where they're coming from. I'll use um, mask, which I saw you pull one of last night. I pulled a mask and a Techno Foundry heart for the same person. <laughs> they paid one ninety five for a mask and a Techno Foundry heart cold foil. Mondo one k. Um, if you're opening a pack 
and you get a and you get a cold foil mask. You want to play with it. Now, if you, you already play drafted everything for uh, for brew. If you're if it's your third pack then, and you've drafted then, everything for you okay, can't play I get with if it. it's I get if it's your third pack, but what if it's your first pack? Then fine, but if it's your third pack, you're screwed. So this you're rule should only yeah, have yeah you're should've... screwed. You got to take a cold foil mask instead of the one card in this draft. That's a good point, Louis. Yeah. Uh, you also don't have to take it, might I add? Sure. I in our last draft, I did. I opened up the hat from um, Tails, cold foil hat. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The ragamuffin. Uh mm huh. -hmm. I took it first. That was my first pick. Yeah. And they were like, you know, it's like a $7 card. I'm like, did I, did I ask you? Did I, did I, did I ask you to rate my draft, my, my draft skills? I'm, I'm value drafting son. <laughs> anyway, I, I see, I lost, I see either argument to it, but it's not, my, I, like, I like it. I will say my players were, my players had a stronger reaction to it than I expected. And that's why I'm kind of reprocessing it. Yeah, that's fair. This is not going to be a fire episode. This is going to be a, man, this is a kind of confusing episode. Yeah, this is going to be like, yeah, we need some time to figure this out. Um, and we, Next I think week, we, we owe it. Heat. Not only that we need some time, we owe it to the game to let some of the stuff go. We will get into fire here pretty soon, though. Um, right now. Right, right now. now. Right <laughs> now. Oh, bring the heat, Louie. If, if you came for things we don't like, welcome to Fab 2.0 Whiteboarders. <laughs> All right. Before you FUD it up. I'm not FUDding it up. I'm this is a fantastic product for the international scene this is a completely God, irrelevant product for the united states <laughs> i i like you need to simmer down and let me finish before you go getting crazy on me okay i'm simmering uh, <laughs> i'm down <laughs> I like the idea of the product. Yeah. And here's what I like about it. I love the reprints. Yep. I love CNC's getting a reprint. I love um, Tunic's getting its third reprint or second reprint. I I guess third if you count gold. Uh, I love... I. You can't, Simmer. Me, you, Simmer. Can't, you can't convince me Skullcap's not in this. I, I hope it is. I yeah. hope it is. It is. We don't get the right to complain that cards are too expensive, then complain when they reprint them. I agree. I like the... I, like I have no the, problem with the reprints. I like the E-Strike is in there. And unlike Dr. Louie... God. You don't even know I, what I'm saying. You. I heard you last night fighting it up on your stream. I <laughs> I like the white borders. I'm alone. I'm alone yes, in this world. Alone. You're alone. I'm alone in the world, <laughs> and I will admit that to you. you Nobody can... else I have talked to out of the probably 60 calls I've taken in the last 12 hours, I'm tired. <laughs> you can enjoy your dirty white bordered cards with your finger stains all over them. And... I want them to have Kizzy Gordita crunch <laughs> all over the borders. <laughs> did you see the ultra pro um ultra yeah, pro released uh inner sleeves with black borders and that they're bundling with this product <laughs> okay. no comment all right hold on hold on oh my gosh here's I have so what many i things don't to like. say i know here's what i don't like and you're this gonna is where steal we're gonna, my stuff here's where we're gonna firmly agree this is criminally overpriced go ahead Okay, so this is this product, in my opinion, is so good for the international crowd. Like this is needed internationally. Um, it's absolutely great. I have uh, to our international fans and listeners, which is like almost fifty percent of our podcast. Do, what, uh, it's like seven, English, right? It, it's like seventy-five. It's like fifty percent of my channel. But I think you may have pissed off some of the international crowd with your USA. <laughs> quotes anyway <laughs> they can't handle this freedom <laughs> um, they can't handle this freedom th this product for those who have not had you know product is really good and it's needed and all the way through it's really good and needed you know uh, there are countries that need white bordered common cards <laughs> those countries are not the united states of america <laughs> like, oh, the... hold on hold on <laughs> no country on earth <laughs> needs yes they do Yes, they do. Tell, find me a country I, that I, 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 I send cards to people all the time. From, yeah. 
So does everybody because no, like, yeah, I get it. But like, this is a product for LGSs around the globe. This is a good product. If you're not in the United States, here's why I don't think this is a good product for the United States. There are 480 cards in this product. There is of the, um, let me pull it up. So I don't butcher That's anything. That's not accurate. Just so we're clear. <sighs> there oh, are for the, oh, for 428 four, 427 the cards. cards in the set. Yeah. There are 62 majestics in the set. Okay. Which they must have upshifted any super rares to, to majestic. Or they did Each one of those is a different version of CNC. That's what they're not telling you yet. <laughs> so, like in this pro, and there are nine legendaries. So, the my issue with this product is what we need reprinted in the United States. Again, I am speaking 100% from a US market. I think that this exact product should have been made and should have been distributed globally to the to the people who need it, but should not be a product in the United States. And mind you, this product, and everyone's like, this is a product made for the globe it's not history pack it's one not. is in english and yeah. it's and it's being produced most hypothetically it seems like it's a lot of it's coming to the united states now I, I will say before i go any further before i go any further they could put a legendary in every box and this is a better product this is a decent product um but based on what we know and based on history of flesh and blood and the pull rates and whatever if they don't change the pull rates for legendaries and we have a similar thing that we have had in the past this product is it's not going to work it it's too expensive msrp is $140 which makes map pricing $112 so for $112 for $112, you could buy two boxes of WTR Unlimited from Channel Fireball, get a $30 back in store credit and two free grades and a pineapple and a pear tree as they send you a free box of Monarch Unlimited probably with the whole thing. So, like, why would an LGS take this product, especially that they just dumped a ton of WTR Unlimited on us and they were like, hey, it's all right, it's going to be sold out because we have WTR um, farewell events and it's going to be a hot product. It's going to be really in demand. So make sure you order your product now. And then they dumped another four billion boxes into distribution and now it's on clearance. So, like, it doesn't make any sense in the U.S. market. Uh, in my opinion, what we needed in the U.S. market is a way to get the Majestics and Legendaries out in volume super cheap. Not, like, 30% cheaper. Like, my gut is that this will not be opened enough that the so and, and that the Legendaries and Majestics will be pulled so difficultly that the card prices on these products will be, like, 30% less than the Unlimited versions. And if that's the case... <laughs> A, the EV is still hoard, not 112 bucks on this product. And B, it doesn't lower the bar for players enough to actually make a difference. A better product, let me finish and then you can give me all your stuff. A better product would have been like a small little booster box, five packs in it, no, no commons, no rares. It's not draftable anyway. So why, why are there commons in this? No commons, no rares, five packs, one card, majestic or legendary it's a 30 dollars box and one in every 10 box i'm just you know you have to do the math but one in every 10 boxes ha packs has a legendary in it you you print this so that the these wow. cards are 10 to 15 percent the price of their counterparts that are in and it's easy and accessible for players go ahead i know i just went on a tyrant <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, a tirade, not tyrant. You are a tyrant. That was a tirade. Um, I have one major problem. I, I don't like the product as a whole. I think that's fair. I don't love it. It's too uh, expensive. I don't. I don't. I don't. That so there's two problems, right? One is it's way too expensive. Way too expensive. It doesn't solve the problems we're going to talk about in a minute here, but it doesn't solve the problem that I've highlighted. But like my biggest problem is there's no foils. God, you're no. Who wants white bordered foils? You're the only person in the universe. You are the only person in the universe. I like the white borders. You and your your cult following in the comment section are the only person. You're the, like, I, no, you know what I want? I Hold want, I want cards with poop smeared on them. And your, let me your be very clear here like, to yes. my... Let me be very clear here to my... To my Beautiful, beautiful souls in the comment section. You have no obligation to support white borders just because I do. I know I'm alone in the universe on this one. White I know one man stand. 
Um, but I, I don't. Here, here's why I don't like the non foils. Like this is just a worse version of Unlimited. Yes, it is a hundred percent. It's a worse it and now more expensive. More expensive. Yes, and more expensive and, for the stores. Yeah, to, to carry to have on your shelf. I much rather have two boxes of WTR Unlimited on my shelf that can be drafted in the store and can be used for other support than one box of this. That like, eh, who's gonna really want it? Um, this doesn't. Solve, I don't know. It, like, this the only way this can solve the problem is if they really increase the pull rates of yeah. legendaries and majestics. Yeah, if that's I, the case, I wait. Hold on, boo boo. I agree with legendaries. I mean, like, I don't know. I. I don't know. We'll see. I will say that, like, I will tell you, I put in my order yesterday for it, and my distro immediately called me because he thought I made a mistake because I <laughs> ordered a certain number, and he thought I left off either one or two zeros <laughs> and was stunned when I told him that that was the right number. Yeah. Um, I guess I don't think this is going to – I don't think – I don't – barring something crazy, I don't see this flying. This could be a great product in a year. If they were to no, release this no. in one year – so let me get into, I think, the biggest, because the next set of this releases in 2024. Oh, gosh, you're so hu hung up on this. I am. So yeah. here is the issue I have with that. When we started Flesh and Blood, we were promised no power creep, right? That was the thing. It was the eternal format. There was going to be, there, you know, he openly called out power creep, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. There has been a pretty good amount of power creep over the last yeah. year, like an incredible amount of power creep over the last year. There's a reason you don't see a lot of alpha or, or welcome to Wraith or arcane heroes in uh, the top eight anywhere. Yeah. Uh, like Starvo is just an objectively better bro. Starvo prism chain. Bingo. Visra is there. Visra is OG, but it's yeah, Visra sure. with 80%. It's Visra with 80% monarch and, right. uh, and, Tails cards, yeah, he runs Rosetta, right? Yeah, Me, mainly Monarch to one K. Um, so like, there's been a lot of power creep. So I think, like, I'm hoping, my hope is that they're saying we're going to release the set every two years, is because they're going to tone down that power creep considerably. Because that's the only reason you need any of the old cards. If all the old cards are unplayable, <laughs> you don't care. But like, C and C is still probably perfectly fair. E Strike is still fair. Um, you know, certainly Tunic is still in use. Like, I hope they, uh, except for Fino Black, who doesn't believe in using the triggers of force. <laughs> um, but like, I, uh, I commented on Fino's uh, video the other day talking about the pro the pro tour stuff. He was he was pretty upset, and why? I can't, because of all the changes to the pro tour stuff. Oh, video, oh yeah, yeah. and He's I just left a that. comment. I just left a comment that was like, "Hey, man, like, love hearing the that side, this perspective of, of the game." Because I'm not from that. He watches the channel, so he may hear heard them. Um. Anyway, continue. So I mean, like, I, you know, I hope they tone down the power creep, and I hope this is the sign they're going to do that. Um, I don't know. Like, I think that's cool, and that's good. Um, I have a couple of broader issues with the statement that we'll get into at the very end. I think. I think that makes okay. more, that makes more sense for me. I want to make I want to make one point. Um, you made a and, lot in your tirade. Continue, and, and that is that this product does not include any any um, reprints of legendaries from anything other than WTR and Arc, and pro probably not crew. I doubt Cheyenne is in this. Is she? Oh, no, she's not. Good. Hopefully not. Um, but the most expensive legendaries on the market right now for unlimited are not the ones that are in here. Grasp is really the only one. Phantasmal Footsteps, not going to be in this no product. no idea if Grasp is in there or not. Well, Grasp could be in there. Right. Um, what I'm saying is, like, the most expensive legendaries, Phantasmal Footsteps, not in there. Rampart, oh, not I in there. Carrion Husk, not in there. Valiant Dynamo, not in there. Vestige of Soul, not in there. The next, the first one, those are all above. Tunic is one of them. It's, it's high. Skull Cap is high. Other than that, like, the, the legendaries that are preventing people from getting into this game are not in this product. This is like you this, really dislike this product. I, I listen, I watched a Rudy video today, yesterday from two years ago, and he's talking about oh my gosh, sh shut up. He's talking about shut up your eyes, <laughs> close your eyes. <laughs> Rudy's talking about how new games fail. 
And he's talking about new games fail when they print a set that doesn't move and it sits on shelves and that prevents a store from ordering the next set. And so if you are, I think, I think that is very apt. Continue. I'll go over that in a second. If you are a store and you're, if you think that this is going to be a good product and this is going to help people get involved in the game and you buy 10 cases of this and you spend, I don't know how much, I don't know how many are even in a case, but let's say you spend seven, let's say, I don't know if they even said, let's say you spend seven grand on this product to put it in your store and you sell 50% of it. You like, and then the rest of it just sits there. You're not going to order the next product. You're going to, you're not going to order as much of the next product. Like this is the type of stuff that I think like is risky. If they didn't, if they increase the pull rates, then maybe it's okay. But as a whole for the U S market, I think this is a, I think this is a big miss. I honestly think this is, this is going to be an ugly, ugly, ugly miss. Um, I largely agree with you. Probably not to the same extent. Uh, I largely agree that I like, listen, they, like, I'll tell you guys what I ordered. I ordered 48 boxes and the guy told me, oh, the, God, that's nothing. Right. Like, <laughs> like to put it in, like I got more than 10 times that of Everfest. Yeah. I've sold more than 10 times of that of Everfest. Right. I, I hear a kid. Um, Sorry, my wife's son. Okay, good. Um, I just like, I don't. I'm worried about this product. I don't think it's going to sell very well at my store. Um, I agree with you that it's for overseas, but this one's not overseas, and that doesn't make any sense. I I, I don't know. Like I, I tend to agree with what you're saying. I, listen, I love... I'm not saying that we don't need reprints. Everyone's like calling out collectors for saying that this is... This is I agree we need more cards in the hands of players at cheaper prices. We have said that on the podcast. I wholeheartedly believe that this, unless they really, really increase the the okay. cards this is not the answer it's not can you hold on to that thought because i want to talk about it at the end because i have I, that's i have i have the, two things i want to discuss at the end of this that I this don't like. seems like a great way to never mind all right go ahead boo boo what's next next topic let's 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 let's, let's roll let's roll what else you got all right me, beautiful have 2.0 living legend go go ahead go ahead i heard this yesterday go ahead go ahead go okay, wait, wait, no, no, no. before we get there i want to positive casual formats and pve baby we're getting pve it's gonna be the best it's gonna be so good i love that they are making i literally literally could not care less about pve but shout out for commoner love commoner commoner is commoner's goat uh commoner yeah i love the inclusion of rare heroes i think that's awesome i like that i do like the rare um heroes included it allows you to use mandible claws as a rare, which is kind of cool. The weapons. Um, yeah. Anyway, I like commoner PVE stoked for it's going to be their main. What do they say? Um, their main casual format. Uh, yeah. Their main casual formats. Uh, I awesome. really hope you're right. And I'm wrong on this. Oh, I'm I will say. So this is I the, have, I have the, no, I have no, I don't know if it's just my bias. I have no interest in PVE, but like, I don't think my store does either, but we'll find out. You've probably never played Dungeons and dragons. I have, first of all. No, and second of like all, the there's time, like you seem like the, you seem like the type of person who thinks that's a waste of time. Yeah, those people are the worst. Um, <laughs> this is great. This is a, that's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great product. I wish. Um, it, here's here's one thing I will say about this part of the article. Saying that we think that casual formats need more support, and then basically just launching commoners an official format with without like really giving us specifics i think is a little like i would have liked to see like a little bit more um about pve a little like a test you know like a hey this is what it looks like something to excite the casual because we're not going to see pve for like eight months so like if you wanted to jump start some excitement in the casual format now i think you could have done something a little bit more in that section but still like it all right now things i don't like back to those oh we're not going to talk about the elo stuff because I can't. I can't think of two more people who are less uh, less qualified to talk about ELO scores or LOs, whatever. That I can't. I don't even know what it's pronounced. Um, all right. <sighs> Deep breath, Luke. <laughs> you're you're going today, son. I like this. This is great. That's like a day off for me. It's weapons, like a vacation day. Weapons are now retroactively applied <laughs> to heroes. 
so that when they living legend, the weapon also gets banned. But wait, it's okay that we're changing all that because there's now a format for living legend heroes that you can play in like, I don't know, it's like three years when we have more than a couple of heroes in living legend. I hate this. <laughs> Well, you've hidden that very well. And I don't hide things. I have nothing to lose. I have nothing to lose. Nothing. This is all I have, and it's nothing. This is my opinion, and I I value the, their reason. Like the, in their um in their game, what what they say is, uh, where's the uh, rules and policy? Their rule and policy, their entire thing says the purpose of this is to allow. That's terminate rules and policy. Hold on, reprint policy. Uh, where is it? Card legality to support long-term utility of card ownership. That goes against everything that's in this in this part of the article. It goes against it. They, like they, we're gonna make cards not legal anymore because a a hero that uses them got banned. That's not what they said in their card and legality policy. And this is the stuff that I hate as a collector. I understand that as a player, and this is the argument, as a player, it sucks to have a format that's dominated by Luminaris and it's an oppressive card and whatever. Okay, then don't then put ban, it in the freaking game. Then ban game. that card. Like, that's don't, what I don't like about it. Then or ban don't, that card. Don't nerf print that the card. card. Don't yeah. print the card. Don't print it. Like, don't, like, like, uh, man, like, I and listen, like I, I have a small, I have, I think I have four Luminaris cold foils. Oh no, I'm out eight hundred bucks when this happens. Okay, wait, so, are Luminaris is two hundred dollars? Like two fifty, yeah. So when they drop down to the price of a, I will, I will dust see you blade, all on on the marketplace in a few minutes. Here, continue, Louis. <laughs> when they drop down to really? the price of a dusk blade, yeah. Like this is what I, I. I, I lose out on a thousand bucks. That's fine. It, the, that's not what this is about. This is about the confidence in the collector's market for people wanting cold foils and to collect those things to have no, like, <sighs> it makes no sense. I don't know. Like when Briar goes out and Rosetta Thorn goes away. They will never let Briar become living legend ever. <laughs> <laughs> they will just constantly nerf her because they're not ready for me. Or okay, how about how about all you fans of playing Dorinthia and uh Dorinthia Sabres and Blitz and you really like that deck on that format and then Cassi gets Living Legend and now you can't play Ka Centauri you can't play Centauri Sabres. Like, I don't know, man. This just feels this is it just feels feels bad to me. If you wanted to make if you wanted a vintage format, if you wanted to make this a format that changes wait, wait. Wait, okay. wait, wait. I know there's this new push for vintage. I don't know where this came from. We're doing a vintage. We're doing this. Did you know this? No. We're going to do a, um, a, uh, a crucible and before tournament, like a big one, <laughs> like huge prize support. We're going to do it's only WTR arc and crucible cards. Nothing else is legal. Crew meta. And we're going to do a whole thing. We're going to call it uh, vintage. <laughs> It's vintage, baby. Why are you looking at me like that? Wait, that's if, does it make it old? Does it make it better if plunder run's still legal, but uh, drone of brutality is not? <laughs> Wait, I guess it's true. I like the game's been out for two bases, you know, for three years less than. Yeah, I know. I just like I don't like this. Seems like an add-on that was completely unnecessary I, to me. This I, seems, I, it, it seems completely I irrelevant. Largely and unnecessary. agree. I'll be honest. I don't care. Uh, this is not something this, this really st stuck in your craw. I don't care about this. Yeah. I don't like change. I don't like change. I know. I know. Like this is to me. I don't, I don't know. I just don't like, I don't like changing okay. the collectible side of the game. So Louis has gone on a couple tirades now. Now it's my turn. I think. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fair. There were two things that I think I was looking for in this release that were not there. And I'll yeah. be candid. I think these are the two most important things. Yep. I agree. And this is where I like, I slept. I, you know, I went to bed and I was like, you know, like people were, I think people are generally positive about this 2.0. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. I'm very anxious. And let me explain to you why. Now, I, this could all be fixed and them just not announce it. 
That can be true, and I hope that is true. But there's two major changes I was looking for that were not announced. First and foremost, I was hoping there was going to be some mea culpa and in a way to address the kind of direct partnership and distribution issues that they have had. Yep, I agree. Instead, they announced it on Channel Fireball's birthday and thank him and thank their direct partners in the first two paragraphs. Right. Yeah, they thank your LGSs too. Yes, true. <laughs> I, 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 like, no change matters at all if they're going to force Channel Fireball to take an enormous amount of boxes, more boxes than Channel Fireball can reasonably sell, then Channel Fireball has to continuously dump. Because that's why your boxes are worthless. Yeah. Because Channel Fireball now has Everfest today for $80 map. Map, lowest price I'm allowed to charge, lowest price Dr. Louis allowed to charge. But that's not all. Ron Popeil. Ron Popeil's still alive, right? I don't he know died. who that is. I don't know who that is. Nobody knows who that is. You were dead wrong about the rocket surgery thing, might I add. I know. I was. Yeah. Put in the comment section below if you know who Ron Popeil is. I like that little uh, the pasta maker he had. But wait, there's more. You also get a $15. Oh, is that the guy that, that does the, um, the infomercials? Yeah. I know Ron. I know Ron. I'm on a first name basis with Ron. Uh, so me and Ron, but wait, there's more. You also get a $15 channel fireball card shop live gift certificate. So you're really paying 65 bucks for the box. Yeah. Josh which is disagrees with not, you. <laughs> I heard that. I heard him. Josh, get better. All right. You could not be worse at this than Louie. That's impressive. It's all right. At least Josh had an opinion on it. I had an opinion on it too. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I've noticed. That that hold on, sexy. Mind. I'm not done yet. So that is single digit do, single digits more than I pay for my boxes. Yeah. And mid single digits more than I pay for my boxes. Yep. yep. If that problem isn't fixed. And that is shipped. That is shipped. Yep. I, I literally cannot sell it for that and make a nickel. I will yep. lose money every box. And, I sell. and if you do, you will be banned from LSS for receiving product for two months. If they don't fix that problem, n the 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 improvements to the boxes won't matter. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to see a flesh and blood box not open up at map in a while. I Guess agree. my gut. The other thing I was looking for, and somebody said they said this. I don't think they said it clear enough if they did say it, was I wanted to see a renewed commitment to play test. Yep. This was the, these. These were the first. These were the number one and two things on my list for what I want to see in Fab. No, number yeah. two and three after a change to the box in Fab Two Point I like the last three sets have had broken heroes. This is objective by their own account, except for Bravo, Starvo, which I think is like wink, wink. It's not you know I. You know, it's not broken, but uh, man, I hope it hits Living Legend before Pro Tour, uh, yeah. which it might not now that he didn't win the last uh, event, but we'll see. Um, the last event it, was Skirmish. Oh, that's know. right. Skirmish. Um, God, not Skirmish. It was Blitz. It was Blitz. Yeah, I, that's, like, I can't get this. I know. Things. I know. Yeah. You're not bright. I was about to call oh. you a terrible content creator, and I don't even know that go. before that. <laughs> um, I, that's right. It was Blitz. I'm talking about that. Sorry, everybody. I, this needs to be fixed. Yeah. Playtesting. They can't keep producing broken boxes, having Channel Fireball dump them, and it work. Yeah. These changes, I think, are largely good. There's some tweaks I'd make. I think that there's some issues that I, you know, that, like little, they're disagreements. They're not problems. They're things I don't agree with and some things I do agree with, but they're not like objective problems. I wouldn't yep, say. I agree. That's how, yeah, that's how I feel about the, the living legend thing, but like play testing and dumping are problems. Mm -hmm. And those are things that aren't addressed in this in a way that I felt good about. Those are, also the things that affect the local game store the most yeah of course like out of everything that affects the local game store 
that affects the local game store the most. Because if you don't play tests and you have another, if we have another meta that is not fun to play with, like this past one, the hemorrhaging of players will be, I, I don't want to use well, like, like I know we already many, see them. We already see I, them, right? I know many people who don't play anymore in the, they're like, I'm not playing until star Wars gone. I know there's no, I, lost, I mean, like I'll you be honest, Brennan, I I've lost some players. Uh, Arsenal pass said this, that yeah. the biggest issue that this abandoned restricted announcement had is on the casual player who plays at the armory event because they don't want to play for another month now because it's no. going to be all Bravo. And so like, yeah, this I is guess- what this, that those two things the partner stores that are completely making it unable for lgs's to sell boxes and then the play testing and honestly these are usa issues this, these are those are inherently usa issues because we don't see the bravo meta happening as far as as big of numbers overseas and we don't have competition with Channel Fireball overseas. These, this is a re- result of not having a USA liaison, a USA person experiencing and understanding things going on in the USA. Um, I agree with that. Listen, like, I, I think these changes are fine, but I will admit I woke up and thought, what really changed? Eh, um, the boxes are better. Boxes are maybe better. Like, let's go back to this for a second. They are providing a solution. Oh, they're that's pro- a win. They, they are they are attempting a solution. Yep. That's here a has win. been my here has been my issue. This has been our issue, mainly mine. Boxes are too cheap, and staples are too expensive. Yeah. I don't know if that will be fixed with this. It certainly won't be fixed with. That. With the white borders. I know. I know, Boo Boo. You hate the white borders. I'll make you a shirt. I don't hate the white borders. borders. No, I don't hate the white borders. I hate the box. I hate the box. That should be a... No way. I digress. I mean, like... I... Like... What I hope... What I hope is that, like, they're too busy renegotiating with Channel Fireball right now to put it down and they're just in the negotiation phase. That's what I hope. If they aren't if they aren't moving to Star City Games, they are com- like they have Louis. missed the point. They have missed the entire US market point. I don't know if they're Channel able Fireball to win. is trying to destroy the local game store so that Channel Fireball can have a monopoly in the United States. They're not their marketplace, to. their marketplace, they launch a marketplace with a 3% fee for selling, which is amazing. It was super great. And then they undercut every single box and every single product with Card Shop Live every single day. You listed something on their marketplace, and the next day they automatically undercut as Card Shop Live, and then they jacked the fee up to eleven percent or something like that. It's like a complete farce, and then they advertise it as like a for the LGS thing, while their Card Shop Live undercuts their own effing marketplace. Like, like, come on! Like, this is you can't write a better stand-up skit. Like if you wrote a stand-up skit with like a horrible, like this is, it's that's yeah. The number one stand-up skits in the world are about TCGs. For the record, everyone, very relatable to everybody. She's a lucky lady. <laughs> anyway, like it's like they're trying to have a monopoly on the U.S. market, and Flesh and Blood was supposed to solve the LGS issue, and instead yeah. they're partnering with the person who's trying to kill the, yeah, the LGS. Yeah, like, listen, again, like, I'm not saying this stuff won't be fixed by LSS. It might be. might be being fixed right now. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, I do, too. I would have liked to have heard that they recognized that there was a problem with that. Yeah. Seems like Star and City Games would be a much better partner. That seem, what's it again? Star City Games would be a much yeah. better partner. Uh, this is, goes back to where I said in the beginning. When when Mike saw Channel Fireball playing games with his boxes, he put it right in his Discord. I don't like what I'm seeing. I will remember this next time we go up for contract negotiations. Yeah. I was looking for a statement like that in this, and I didn't see it. Yeah. Just being honest. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Let's, uh, Let's switch on. gears. Let's switch gears. Okay. Not only, not only am I the only person in the world to like white borders, <laughs> I am also the only one to not go gaga over sorcery. You're going to be so wrong on. I I know. Let me be very clear here. 
I like I am not equally alone. I am equally alone in this. No, there's one like dodo bird in your comment section being like, I'm gonna scientifically prove that these aren't hand drawn. And I'm like, I don't that <laughs> all right. I, that, that's not my issue with it. We're talking about that, <laughs> talking I don't about care if they're not hand drawn. Talking about sorcery now, everyone. So all right, Dr. Louie. You and your infinite TCG LGS wisdom. I know your store is booming and does amazingly well uh, compared to my lowly store. Okay. Um, so, so tell me, what am I missing? I'm not, let me, let me start off this. I'm not negative on sorcery. I'm like agnostic on sorcery. I like it. What am I missing? You are missing. You are, you are entrenched in the flesh and blood attitude of like TCGs are for the local game store. And you like this is not a product that I would say is going to save the local game store and is going to be a massive, you know, addition to the local game store. I think that sorcery is a phenomenal transitional game between board games and TCGs. And I will that, say it was fun the game I played. That is a massive, massive market. That is not, not tapped at all. I um, I played a lot of board games with a lot of different people. Um, and anybody I ever tried to get to play Magic from that world who had never played a TCG, they couldn't do it. They just, they didn't like it. They didn't like that there wasn't a, you know, tactical side, a board game side of it. And I think that this is a, um, a transitional product that if you have a board game scene like or if you have a group that you play board games with this is a perfect product to be like hey you guys want to try this new game called sorcery and then you can transition it into hey this is also a tcg that you can open up boxes and whatever um so i think there's a really good market for this now i will say they're not going to be doing a whole lot of tournament tournament organized play stuff so i think for an lgs this is a this is a um grassroots you've got to create your own community if you want it to work at an lgs level I, um my question is not uh should an lgs carry it I, I don't really care like i don't this is not that like you're saying that, that's not that's not what this product is for there's only one release a year here's my question like what okay i, I want to address oh, that because that's uh, well, every that's everyone's negative that's not a negative it's a fact that's ever i know but everyone uses that to say there's no way a, a tcg can survive at one release a year i would i would not hold on to that as tightly honestly like they made way more money off of this kickstarter than they anticipated and things like that can change when you have more money so if if they decide to change their business model and say hey actually we are going to do more sets a year that can always happen. I don't. That's not my point. I don't care about that. That's fine. Okay. Also, it's like four hundred cards in the set. That's a lot of cards in the set. Can't not as it. many as white border, um, <laughs> which is three sets. No, it's not. It's a new set. Okay, continue. I. Wh who is going to play this game that has going to play Genesis? Uh, this is different than Genesis. Genesis okay. is trying to do the LGS thing. Like, so the difference is that this, the, is that this place, this, this company hits the LGS. No, <laughs> listen, like this is not selling it. Marketing is different. The marketing is, is vastly different. Uh, sorcery is a game that I think, uh, you play with, uh, your family you play it with your wife you play it with a, a board game group i think i think uh genesis is trying to do more of a competitive tcg element they're gonna have That's a cool. they're gonna have you know they've got a fifty thousand dollar tournament coming up in uh in um columbus do you know, remember when that is i don't remember exactly when it is it's coming up in the next couple months uh, they've got all that. They've got tournament kits. They've got organized play ladders. They've got all the things that TCGs do to be competitive. Sorcery is a casual game at its core that will have potentially some competitive si sides of things. I think that you may see some like, um, c like uh, LGS created sorcery things if they if somebody wants to do that like you might see an lgs who really likes sorcery put on like a competitive tournament or something like that but it's not going to be hosted by sorcery 
themselves. And that's a huge difference. I think the casual player will gravitate towards a game like sorcery. That is, um, you know, less of a really, it's like more of a board game esque thing. Uh, whereas I see Genesis as a TCG. I think that the products, just because they're both, um, like tactical, yeah. Tactical grid base doesn't mean that they're the same product at all. I mean, I think that's fair, but I also think that like, I think it's equally fair to say that that means there will be some overlap, right? There's not that many grid based games. Like that's a pretty natural comparison. I would say the gameplay is also pretty, pretty significantly different. That's fair. Like significantly different. That's fair. Um, so like so like why does this excite you let me ask you that like what about like you you're like you like you're all in on the you're all in on the uh sorcery hype to be fair i'm pretty much all in on any card game <laughs> like that's not dip around the truth i like out the legions i am a i am a big fan of card games that provide unique collectible experiences and unique gameplay experiences I would so say what, I would. So what say, about this one excites you? For sorcery, the artwork is phenomenal. So uh, maybe like, very clear here, amazing artwork. I think like the artwork and collectability that are in sorcery as a as a game is absolutely phenomenal. It, it is flesh and blood level, like alpha level collectability in my mind. Um, would that change if I could scientifically prove that they weren't hand drawn? You can't do that because they were hand drawn, but sure, you and the guy in the comment section can just have a my field, favorite field day. Um, but like, I think like the 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 collectability side. I mean, the boxes, the print run. Some people have done the math. It's like I think it's like less than twenty thousand boxes. Like that's again like I, I alpha don't, level. I'm not, I'm not arguing if it's ten D time or not. I think it I might don't be care about ten D. Listen, I'm not I'm not talking about the ten Ds. I'm talking about collectability, like having like a fun rare thing to collect like right. um i, I think so that's what we're gonna do boys set, and girls set collecting is great for it and then it's a fun game to play around the table i will say the biggest loss to tactical gameplay this is the biggest issue with a tactical card game is that you yep. can't just grab a deck put it in your backpack and play with your friend at the airport or play with your friend at the you know at um you know when yeah. i was in high school we would play at the ymca or you know like it's just not like a you can't just like <laughs> you can't just like throw you have to have a grid you have to have the the board thing and you don't have to but in order to actually play you do. i agree I agree. okay so here's what we're gonna do boys and girls we gotta, we gotta we gotta get to the zoo because you gotta go do other nonsense and i want to talk about the zoo because that's pretty yeah. much what I always want to talk about. Um, I'm going to do some more research on sorcery. Louis can do some more research on sorcery. We're going to start a segment called Grid is Great. God, no. We're going to work on that for sure. On the Grid is Great segment, we're going to alternate between sorcery and Genesis. Yeah, I like that. Because we love us some Genesis and Louis loves him some sorcery and I'm trying to understand I do not. I trillion dollars. Before I played sorcery, I thought that sorcery and Genesis I, were going to compete. I no longer think that. I think that source. Like I will admit, I will admit that I think sor sorcery was much better than I. And I said, I said this several times now publicly. Sorcery was was much better than I expected in terms of gameplay. Yeah. Um. It was very good. It was very fun. Um. I I get that. That I'm in. I don't know. Like I just, I don't know. I don't know why it's not like. Um, I don't know. You, because from an LGS standpoint, it's rough. It's it, it needs some work. If they want to be a game that's in a bunch of LGSs, they need to do some work on that side of it. But I I don't read that as the advertisement. I like I agree. Fab, that. Fab that was their thing. That's what they claimed. That's what they said. That's why the Channel Fireball thing makes me so mad. They said that they were a game for the LGS. They are not saying that. They're saying that they are a casual game. I would, if I were making decisions for sorcery, I would just be direct to consumer. Well, they will. They should be. If they're yeah, not. like I would just be there. I mean, they're going to go through distribution. I would just go direct to consumer. Like Why that's they, how. What, what distributor picked them up? Do you know? Oh, they've had. A, he told me they've had like almost all the distributors reach out. Oh, I'm sure. Like. 
every distribution. Remember my yeah. joke like in the fourth episode about how I can get Sasso to take any card game I want as long as I give <laughs> yeah. an exclusive promo? Yeah. That's the same thing with distributors. If, if I were Sorcery, I would go direct to consumer and yeah, absolutely. Get, give LGSs some sort of bonus like they did with the Kickstarter. Yeah, absolutely. To, like that's the way that I would I would absolutely. go with it. Anyway, um, yeah. All right, let's move on to All right, Grid is great coming every week. Do 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 Meta Zoo. Magic is real. That song is on repeat in my house. My my daughter wakes up and says, "Play the Meta Zoo song, Daddy. Play the Meta Zoo song." She loves it. She walks around the house going, "Power is real." It's awesome. It's been in my head for three weeks. I can't get it out. How's that going for you? It's great. I love it. I love it. Dude, dude, uh, dude. Meta. I have never listened to the Nightfall or the Wilderness theme song. That's the only one I, I know. It's a Wilderness is pretty good. Yeah. All right. Continue. All right. A few about? things. We never. You never told me what we're talking about in MetaZoo. This is. I'm learning with the listener. A few things to talk about. Thing one. MagiaCast sold out. <laughs> yes, it did. Sold out instantly. I didn't get any boxes. I also got no boxes because I was in the middle of doing a release event for my store. I got hooked up. I got hooked up uh, from two people. Shout out to. Yeah. Shout out Min Man. Shout out Andrew hooking me up, baby. Andrew Ice Nine? Of course. Pays to have friends. He got me the shirt. There you go. We got you that shirt. Thank you, Andrew. Um, you clothe me. Um <laughs> I um I like that product a lot. I think that's a really cool product. Fantastic. Have you opened your boxes yet or no? I've not. Are you opening them or you can keep them sealed? I'm gonna open some. So here is what I am like knee deep in, knee deep in content. I made five videos yesterday. <laughs> I know. Like I, I'm not I'm not getting into it. I'm not I don't getting have into time it again. to open magic. I'm not right getting now. into it again. Uh like your videos need to simmer down. That's all right. I'm uh I'm I'm for, 45,000 views away from being the number one viewed flesh and blood content creator. <laughs> Who's ahead of you? Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it, but I'm working hard on getting the views in. Is it I'm not going to talk about it. Continue. That's like my goal right now. I have, I have goals. All right. I want you all to like and share this podcast. If this thing gets to 50,000 views, we can overtake Louis' mystery nemesis. <laughs> that's not a nemesis. It's the just person a... he hates more than anybody in the world. He told me off chat. That's not true. I never said that. <laughs> I don't not... know who it is. But that's not true. Yeah, I'm just lying. <laughs> um, so MagiaCast sold out instantly, basically. And there's a lot of them. Like, I, I, listen, like, it shows that once again, the demand for MetaZoo was like very real. Yeah. Like, the demand for MetaZoo is like stout. And the demand, and on top of demand, the market, because as soon as it sold yeah. out, the boxes jumped up. And yeah. mind you, this is not a product that's required. This is 100% a collector's product, right? Like, yeah. this is a a collectible and i love that there's been no complaints about it because of that it's not required for the game it's a no. funny april it, it meta poo shout out to ken meta poo was in the uh in the product notes of it like i love it like this is a funny entertaining product that and i didn't get because i was on driving on my way to my birthday and in Nashville. This, nobody can hurt your birthday and this is another reason why goat is goat when somebody called it Metapoo, he didn't send them nasty emails. He didn't say, I don't like you and you're so mean. He was like, he took it as a joke and he embraced it and he used it for his advantage because he's an adult who runs a multi million dollar business. <laughs> and that's, and like, uh, let me give another shout out to Rudy. When I called him, when I said that was an a hole move last week, you know what he didn't do? Yeah. Send me a nasty email saying, oh, George. I thought we were buddies. Why yeah. are you so mean to me? Yeah. Because guess what? Rudy is also an adult who yeah. also runs a multi-million dollar business. Right. Uh, yeah. And no. this is why Goat is Goat. Because like he doesn't... He is always company first. Always. Yeah. And it's funny. Like I teach the book um, Good to Great in my class. Great book. A little outdated. But that's all right. So am I. Can you send me one of those? I need I need somebody to send. I know some you books. need a lot of reading. I know I will send you some reading materials because God knows you need it. First book, how to read. <laughs> Second book, good to great. <laughs> um, <laughs> a book called How to Read. If that hasn't been created, it's a I'm gonna make it right now. <laughs> how to read? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look on Amazon. 
<laughs> we are sponsored by the book How to Read. Um, <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, and one of the things that the book says is personal humility with company driven focus. You can make fun of Goat, and he doesn't hate you. It's a book. It's called. Is it really? A, it's called How to Read a Book. It's a bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> okay continue. um uh all right magic cats great i agree one can i have one great yeah i guess you can completely change the point i was making continue okay finish your point mike is always company first he doesn't take the stuff personally he doesn't whine he looks at the he looks at the situation and goes how can metazoo succeed in this environment yep that is like, and that is something I think all car games um, should embrace. Like Assad does a good job of this too, frankly. If you critique Assad, he like it's like, oh, how do I incorporate that feedback into my next product? Yeah. Um, and this is what Mike does. Like he's always company driven, always company first. He really cares about the future of MetaZoo, not his ego. And that's like that's a big benefit for Mike, I think. Yeah. Um, I agree, hundred uh, percent. With Magic Cast, the only thing I didn't really like um, is that it came out on release weekend for I Wilderness. Agree. How to read but... is a book that makes me happy. <laughs> I wish that the Magic Cast came out like uh, like two weeks. And I think what happened it was and this April is... Fool's thing. Well, and yeah, and what happened is the Wilderness release got pushed back two weeks, yeah. and it, he wanted to be an April Fool's thing. So, like, I get it, and it's fine. Uh, it, it's a good April Fool's thing. So it, I think I would have probably made the same decision if I were him. Uh, but as a LGS who was trying to sell Wilderness, like it, it kind of took away some of the um, allure of, hey, the new set's releasing. So I would have liked to see it on a different day. But I also understand the April Fool's stuff. And also it was like a limited print run. So there's like yeah. two sides to it as well. But um, yeah, uh, I also, had two pre-release events this week too. People loved it. Also... So, Pre-release decks are super fun to play. Okay, sorry. I wanted to talk about gameplay to help encourage people to play the game because that's all we hear is that nobody plays the game. But I had eight people in for pre-release twice this week. But also... Your favorite topic. Profile picture NFTs are coming. Oh, we're talking about NFTs? We're doing it? So Let's okay, if you uh, if you hate NFTs, if you if you if you hate, hate NFTs, this has been made the zoo be with you. Remember <laughs> to be kind to those around you, and also with you. Continue, Louie. Uh so yeah, the NFT thing, it's awesome. Uh, prof- they look sweet. The- they look awesome. They look I, awesome. I I think they look dope. They I think they're like he's trying to be one of the very few or the first. Maybe I I don't. I think it's hard to like figure out that stat. But that's like all hand drawn with random yeah, traits, drawn. like super cool. Um, and I know like people hate NFTs, but I think uh, if you like NFTs, this is a really exciting thing for those of you who like it. I don't know. And if you I don't, don't like NFTs, hate them. if you don't like NFTs, you can just move on, and it does. It doesn't have anything to do with the gameplay or the collectible card side of it, and it's not stopping you from buying the product or buying the cards it's not taking anything away from you it's just something that some people enjoy and it's another market for metazoo and metazoo is trying to be in literally every market i wouldn't be surprised if mike has a book coming out that's called how to read a metazoo book for kids and it's i would be called a metazoo story the story of the goat and if you like the goat the goat just goes around queues up every other card game if you hate kids, you don't need to buy that book. Um, but also, okay. if you hate NFTs, you also wow. need to buy the NFTs. You don't have to like hate MetaZoo because they do NFTs. It doesn't prevent you. Is that a from thing? People hate kids. I assume so. Well, I, that I that I know is true. <laughs> uh, but like that, I can vouch for. Uh, but like, do people hate MetaZoo because if they do NFTs? Yeah, like people are all about like uh, Grand Archive. They had the the Kickstarter and they had NFTs in the packs, and now they okay. got rid of the NFTs after the Kickstarter because they said that people wouldn't work with them because they have NFTs in their product. Really? Yeah, NFTs Why? are very divisive. I lose patrons every time we talk about NFTs. So you're welcome. Bye, Louis. bye, guys. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'm sorry you don't like NFTs. Um. Anyway. Um. <laughs> 
it's fine. I like it. It's one of those, um, like NFTs are one of those technologies that is trying to be disruptive. Like it's trying to change the way things are done and it's not apparent to everyone how that will actually be an effect. Like, um, the blockchain, a lot of people say, well, can't you just have like regular, you know, computer code? That's not the blockchain. I don't think people fully understand the long-term use of the blockchain. I at least and, want to talk about how awesome the MetaZoo NFTs were. Oh, sorry. sorry. That's really all I cared about okay. during this topic. Okay. I just want to make sure that was very clear. To they everybody. are awesome. They look really cool. Uh, so they're going to be, think... each one's going to be different. Like, it's going to be kind of like a more traditional NFT drop than we've seen before from MetaZoo. Do we know the number? The size? He, said th- he said thousands of variations. That's all we know. Yeah. So I would guess either five or 10,000. Uh, this is amazing. Yeah. I want one in a bad way. Yeah, you gonna put it next to your board eight? I don't want. I don't have one. You know that. I don't know why you hate me so much. <laughs> you I want one so bad. One, you would be way up if you took my advice. I know. You I want you know how much advice. it kills me. You went with your wife's advice instead of your friends. That was a mistake. That was a mistake. <laughs> like what? Are you doing? Like like a six like a me like a six figure mistake with the first digit not being one mistake. Yeah, uh, I love that. You, like of the one thing you take advice from your wife instead of me is that one, and you lost. That's that. actually That's true. true. That's actually true. <laughs> Uh, I'm stoked about this. I think it's going to bring some um, excitement to. I think it's going to bring a lot of excitement. It's going to bring people in the NFT crowd to to start seeing those profile pictures, to start seeing. This is a. When people complain about this, they are losing sight that this is a marketing strategy. Yeah. That, like, this is a, um, you know, like Twitter is going to have verifiable nft uh profile pictures where you have to log in with your blockchain prove ownership of this in order to make that your profile picture yeah you can right click save it and you know put it as your profile picture and you that's can do fine that. and like that's leave fine. It right here i couldn't care less if you do that i hope you right. do if you're supporting the zoo baby i support you yeah. it rhymes it's true Continue. but the, the point is for the marketplace for the thousands of people who are involved in nfts this is a marketing ploy a marketing strategy moving into that world already we have the uh, nfts with utility that uh, allow you to get access to special products like the nft boxes it's not removing pro it's not like a gate to get any product like you don't need a metazoo nft in order to get a booster box of wilderness to play the game no. you need a metazoo nft to get one with a little sticker on it that that yeah. has value for whatever reason because the market reason, says I don't, that, understand, that's I don't understand it. I have 12 of them, but I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. That's all right. I don't, I don't get sell, it. No. I don't and sell like, anything. And, so and like, here's the trick. It's like, I don't get why I would want a Metazoo NFT box. So guess what? I don't have one. And guess what? I don't go on here and be like, oh, God, they made a product that's not for me. Yeah. What jerks? Uh, like, if you don't like the product, don't buy the product. This is marketing of like you're, you're seeing big companies coming out and doing like yeah. NFT marketing and stuff like that. So this is another form of marketing yep. that you, you don't need to be upset about that. You can simply enjoy the idea that more people are going to be excited about MetaZoo as a result of this. Um, it's I'm like, hyped. Stoked. Absolutely stoked. I need you to teach me how to add a profile picture to discord when no, I get I'm mine. I'm not though. doing that. <laughs> Uh-oh. I like, I like your, I think it's such a basic thing. It's like not even that complicated. Uh oh, like I have a problem. Months. Mike, if you're listening, I'll be in Dallas. If you release them before then, will you do it from my phone? That'd be sweet. Um, yeah, like I'm absolutely all for it. I love that they are hand drawn. I love that the artwork looks really cool about it. Looks great. Um, I think it's I'm all really- in on these. I like yeah. these a lot. I'll be buying these. I'll be buying yeah. these. I think I, if I'm not mistaken, I think I get some for being a coin holder. You get one per so, coin. I, I, I don't remember. I'm locked out of the NFT section of the Discord because of that's the, because uh, you right click co- saved the pictures and don't I actually get the NFTs. That, that is the, not verifiable. Like on the, the global collab land thing is broken, so there's like nothing that they can do. But, um, yes, it, yeah, it, it it sucks. But I so I can't actually look at the details of it. But uh, my understanding, I think coin owners get one. So that's pretty Oh, cool. awesome. I'll get some. I'll get some for free then. Yeah. All right. You have to go. I know that look. Yes. I know that look. I know all that right, look. Everyone. All right, everyone. All right, everybody. <laughs> no, that's it anyway, right? That's all we need that's, to talk about. No, Was there something I else? Guess, I guess so. Nope. There's nothing else. All right, everyone. Thank you for being here. George, thank you for your time and your candor. Wisdom. And, and free books. And baldness. And, my, and your uh, book Everyone, go buy the book, How to Read a Book.
Stand in the room <laughs> called How to Read a Book. How stupid is that? <laughs> Alright, everyone. Remember to be oh kind to the people. Oh my god, we gotta get an NFT in the book. <laughs> Remember to be kind to the people around you, and may the zoo be with you. And also with you, Louie. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you.